Hello friends, welcome to our uh, channel TechLT World. Today we are going to discuss about uh, CQI, which is Channel Quality Indicator, which plays a vital role in uh, uh, your in, uh, link adaptation algorithm that is uh, being used in the E node B or uh, G node B, mainly to you know scale, uh, uh, increase your throughput and uh, you know uh, to the UE and also it can give the better uh, channel estimation for the uh, using CQA uh, UE can provide with be with better channel estimation uh, to the E node B so that E node B can take action um, based on the CQA values it can take the action on the UE to schedule better and uh, provide higher throughputs provided better SINR rates so let's go over what is CQA and what is uh, what are the different parameters and types of CQA being uh, used in you know, our today LTE and uh, 5G networks okay so let's get started so what is CQA CQA is an uh, UE reported uh, uh, measurement that represents what is the downlink channel conditions from the at the UE side okay so it basically tells whether uh, uh, the channel is good or bad uh, what is the SINR and that will be map to the particular cqi value so that's what cqi uh, tells right uh, it can it can tell how good the channel is right that is very important for inner b in order to schedule the you know, better uh, mcs values and better modulation and uh, uh, which helps uh, ue to gather more throughput okay so uh, that's what uh, the main purpose of uh, cqi and the scale uh, the range of cq values uh, mainly uh, varies from 1 to 50 okay so this is as per the 3gpp uh, tables uh, that is provided in the standard the values ranges from 1 to 50 okay so as you see in this uh, diagram here so ue basically i mean e would be uh, um, sends the downlink reference signals so in case of lte it will be crs signals which will be sent to the ue and using that signals it can ue can estimate what is the uh, rsr it can measure the rsrp rsrq value and using that values ue generates its uh, uh, cqa value we'll see how it generates uh, a particular cqa value mapping to your rsrp or rsrq okay and that value will be reported back to the e, uh, e node b which helps e node b to you know estimate what is the mcs and number of prbs which in turn uh, how, what would be the transport block size of your uh, data that is that has to be sent to the uh, uvs right and uh, accordingly e node b can uh, you know schedule the uh, data that based on the cqa values it can uh, schedule the uh, transport block size okay so what should be the data that have to be trans transferred to the UE okay so this is the main uh, introduction about CQA so going little bit more details about how does uh, e node B internally uses the CQA value to schedule the UEs okay so basically you have uh, uh, CQA reports so UEs uh, whatever it sends is in the form of a report okay so UE sends a CQA report to the G node B or E node B and using that CQA reports, um, uh, E-Node-B will decide like uh, what should be the scheduling uh, uh, that has to be done for the UEs. Okay, so uh, so it will be like CQA reports, reports will be either periodic or aperiodic. So depending upon the configuration in the, that is sent by E-Node-B, uh, the reports of uh, uh, whether periodic or aperiodic reports have to be sent uh, will be uh sent by you okay so based on that uh, cqa report e node b decides uh the e node b scheduler decides uh i mean how uh, what are the uh, different parameters like cqa is one of the important parameter along with that uh, scheduler will also take help of uh, buffer status reports and qs profile information and the priority of the uh, data so it can choose the best mcs value which is again modulation whether it's uh, qpsk or system com 
or 64 com or in fact 256 com as well right so this is the high types of uh, modulation schemes that are available so using this secure value which which directly maps to the, your uh, mcs based on the 3gpp tables which are given here okay these are the 3gpp table uh 3gpp tables so if you refer to 38.214 which is for 5g you will get the table something like this so uh, depending upon the CQA table, uh, the, each of the table will map to the modulation as well as each of the CQA value is mapped to one modulation scheme. Along with that, it also maps to the code rate and spectrum efficiency. So depending upon your CQA value, you can basically in B can choose uh, what is the uh, type of modulation and the data rate, right? That helps in uh, in B to schedule uh, high data rate depending on if the CQA value is high it can uh, uh, allocate better modulation to the better modulation and the code rate to the UE if it is the uh, CQA value is less as you see here CQA value is more it can have higher modulation and higher code rates but if it is low it can give lower modulation schemes and uh, lower data rate right so that actually impacts your throughput and data rate okay so that's a simple formula is that uh, higher secure value higher mcs and uh, which in turn gives a higher uh, modulation order and higher code rate and which implies the better throughput of course you need to have the good sn or uh, uh, conditions for a better to okay so this is how uh, you know be you know uses the secure report uh, in order to schedule you is better so coming to uh, how does UE calculate CQA value? So we said like UE will send the CQA value to the E node B, right? Based on the channel uh, reference signal uh, estimates, uh, power estimates. So <clears throat> what is the uh, internal algorithm that UE uses uh, in order to generate a CQA report? So there is nothing like direct measurement or any formula like that, but it uses some internal uh, you know, uh, blur versus SN or uh, lookup tables, okay, blur versus SN or lookup look tables, which actually uh, helps you to, you know, choose a, a particular CQA value based on the um, blur and uh, SN or uh, trade-off, okay. So, it chooses the particular uh, CQA value based on this uh, lookup tables. So, first, the steps that uh, include for the uh, UE to you know choose a particular CQA is depending upon the uh, channel conditions, right? So UE first generates, uh, I mean measures the SNR, RSRP, and RSRQ of the reference signals that is sent by E node B, and then it using that SNR uh, these signal strengths, it can estimate what is the achievable blur. For example, as you see in the this is a sample table. This is not any 3PP. Um, you know, spec table, but it's a kind of UE lookup table which will be close to some uh, some of the uh, reference models. Okay, so as you see in this diagram in this uh, table, um, you see like for uh, if if it knows the SNR, okay, SNR, let's say five dB, it can choose the particular uh, MCS value. I mean the CQA value as seven because this SNR is reported uh, i mean is calculated by the ue to you know uh, at 10 percent of blur okay if it is more than 10 percent then this particular snr will not be chosen okay this table mainly talks about the snr values that achieves a uh, blur of 10 percent or equal to 10 percent or less than 10 percent. okay so uh, after knowing this snr value we can decide okay i can choose cqa 7 which is uh, good for this particular channel uh, condition okay so accordingly it will choose the cqa value okay and th this cqa value will be sent to the uh, e node okay so as a as a cqa report as cqa report okay so once e node b gets the cqa value so it maps to the uh, particular mcs index or the you know modulation order okay so as per the 3gpp table that we just show discussed here right so it maps uh, you know be maps that particular cqa value to the mcs index or the modulation order like qpsk or 
uh, fixed income like okay depending upon the three different tables so one of the example uh, we just discussed like uh, 12 db for example assume that uh, snr was uh, reported as snr of 12 db on a cell reference signal cell specific reference signal um, so ue con consults to the internal snr uh, to blur curve that is nothing but this table and it finds that okay there is a cqa 10 value is uh, you know, good enough for uh, this snr of 12 db and cqa value is 10 is good okay and uh, so after selecting that uh, cqa value 10 it reports that value to the e node okay for choosing the better um, i mean for choosing the modulation scheme or uh, your code rate okay so this is how the flow of uh, your cqa report generation from the ue uh, so one note we have to consider uh, when you um, talk about the cqa adjustment by the e node b so so e node b also adjusts the uh, another level of adjustment for the cqa depending upon the hark uh, hark feedback okay if hark feedback um if it says ack okay for a particular uh, data uh, then e node b can increase the cqa value okay it can increase the CQA value. If it uh, receives hard, hard feedback from the UV, it receives ACK. That means the channel conditions are good. So it is uh, good to increase the CQA because, um, you know, the link is good enough because we are not receiving any NAC, I mean, not acknowledged packet. But if it uh, receives a NAC, it will try to reduce the CQA value. Okay. So that uh, lower modulation schemes uh, results in less number of errors. So um, decreasing the CQ value will result in decreasing your modulation schemes, MCS and the code rate that will have better, uh, you know, I mean, less number of errors compared to um, high CQA, high modulation order. So that is one of the, uh, you know, another uh, algorithm that e -Node B follows to in order to keep this CQA values uh, checked. Okay. Okay. So, what are the different types of T CQA reports we have? Okay, so for example, um, you have to consider both in time domain and frequency domain, uh, like what uh, depending upon the CQA, uh, how this CQA will affect both in time domain as well as frequency domain. So, in when it comes to C frequency domain, we call this uh, types of CQA as uh, wideband CQA or uh, subband CQA. Okay. But when you talk about uh, time domain, uh, you can call this as a periodic or a periodic uh, CQA reporting. Okay. <clears throat> so what is wideband CQA? So wideband CQA is like uh, it is the reporting the UE is reporting the uh, wideband CQA for the entire channel bandwidth. Okay. For example, if there is a, a twenty megahertz bandwidth. Okay. So uh, UE is allocated with twenty megahertz bandwidth. So wideband CQA, CQA value will be reported for entire 20 megahertz bandwidth. So as you see here in this diagram, so the this one is a wideband CQA, okay. So you reported wideband CQA for the entire bandwidth, okay. So that is what wideband CQA. But whereas another uh, another variation of that, which is called subband Q, uh, CQA, another type of uh, CQA report. So which means that it, uh, it contains the values of uh, CQA, okay, it's a vector of CQA values, okay, like uh, 2, 3, uh, 4, 10, 12, 14, that's us, okay, this is the vector of CQA values, so then CQA reports the vector of uh, CQA values, which represent the channel quality over its frequency subband, okay, for example, um, this is your complete uh, uh, band, let's say 20 megahertz bandwidth, okay, so your subband will be divided within the 20 megahertz depending upon the number of RBs. So let's assume uh, 20 megahertz is uh, let's assume 100 RBs. Okay. So your subband will be divided here. Uh, let's say uh, you have uh, six RBs for per subband. Let's say you have configured six RBs per subband. Okay. Per subband. Okay. So which means that you can make up uh, up to uh, how many uh, subbands? So 100 divided by 6, right? So it will be close to 16. 
16 uh, sub bands would be there okay so these sub 16 sub bands will be uh, reported by the cqi well so cqi is a vector table which reports for all these 16 sub bands so like this you will have like uh, oh, 5 6 and total 14 15 okay like this 10 11 2 okay so this will be your uh, so this will be the 16 sub band cqa vector table and what it implies is that the sub band cqa i mean when e not b receives this uh, cqa vector table for the sub band it sees that okay i have better channel conditions at these sub bands okay like uh, here so you see 10 12 14 15 right and then 10 11 here so e not b can allocate higher modulation schemes i mean higher modulation uh, mcs values to the um, these particular sub bands but less number of modulation schemes for this so it will give high priority for these uh, cqa values compared to the other cqa so which is very effective uh, if, especially if you have long large bandwidth in case of 5g let's assume it has 100 megahertz bandwidth so you don't have to you know send a wideband cqi uh, for a complete 100 megahertz but you can uh, send as part of uh, you know portions of sub bands depending upon your uh, uh, size of the sub band okay so this is very useful in if you have very large bandwidth so that cqi report will be very efficient uh, for the uh, g node b or e node b to schedule uh, effectively for the use okay so these are two types of uh, you know uh, frequency level uh, cqi reports uh, wide band and sub band but when it comes to the timing like how often the cqa reporting has to be done there are two variants which is called periodic cqa reporting and the one is uh, a periodic C, uh, you know cqa reporting okay so periodic cqa reporting will be sent by pucch channel from the ue whereas a, a periodic will be sent by uh, pusch uh, channel for the e node okay so the you know the reporting interval for the periodic cqi reporting uh, is determined by the number of sub bands uh, comprised of a number of physical resource blocks so uh, it can define like uh, depending upon your number of krbs and number of sub bands you can actually define your uh, uh, reporting interval for periodic reporting okay so similarly um, the cqi reporting for a periodic will be defined by rrc signal uh, and also it will tell like whether uh, you want to do a periodic or uh, periodic uh, cqa reporting will be defined by your rrc message or say the configuration or rrc setup message from the e node b right that can tell you what type of cqa reporting it has to be okay so some of the uh, logs that you will see for both LTE and NR, uh, as you see, this will be either it will be an RRC setup message or RRC reconfiguration message, okay? RRC connection reconfiguration message will contain this uh, information, this is information elements. So basically, here it will tell whether CQA is a periodic or whether it's a wideband CQA or uh, subband CQA, okay? and this is for lte example but if you come to nr example so it will be under csi reporting okay cqa will be reported as part of csi report in case of nr and in that you can see like uh, cqa will be separate uh, you know entity in the complete report of csa okay and here also you can tell like uh, whether that reporting is periodic okay or also, it can tell like what is the CQA format indicator, whether it's a wide band or sub band. Okay. So these are some of the examples from the UE logs you will see for the CQA reporting. Okay. Okay. So that's all I have for the CQA. I hope this uh, session has uh, helped you to understand CQA better. So thank you.